Okay, so what did we prove? Our main goal so far in this whole mathematical lecture is ultimately to show that even for infinite hypothesis sets, uncountably infinite hypothesis sets, this growth function is, does not remain two to the end. As long as that hypothesis set has a breakpoint, as long as it is, it can be shown to be deficient for some n, its growth function is bounded by a polynomial. Polynomial is good because that will result in the error bar shrinking to zero and, and, and give us e in approaches e out when n becomes large. Okay. So what remains is to show that we can indeed replace the size of the hypothesis set in that error bar, in the generalization error bar, by this effective number of hypotheses, which is you know, the number of hypotheses that can be implemented on, on a data set of size n. Okay. So, 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 so you know, the, the challenge here is to link to E out. And I'm not going to give you all the details. You can see all the details in the text okay, and the rigorous proof of the final bound that I'm going to show you. I'll, I'll just sketch for you the very high level ideas. Okay. So the, the, the first challenge is to link to E out. Okay. Now you have E out for G and E in for G. And the, the key insight here is that if you were to generate another sample of data okay, and compute the, the error of G on this other sample, we can call this other sample, it's, it's typically called uh, a ghost sample, we'll call it a data set prime. Okay. And if you, if you evaluate on this data set prime, you get another in sample error. But now that data set prime, you know, G was not selected for that data set prime. So this E in prime, you know, will be close to E out related by the, the, the sort of single hypothesis of being bound. Okay. And so, so in, in this picture here, where, where you see this, this probability distribution that looks a little bit like a Gaussian. So let's consider the situation where E in deviates from E out. Okay. And so we're interested in bounding the probability that E in deviates from E out by a large amount. Now let's look at what's happening with E in prime. E in prime is just another data set. And when you evaluate, it's like a test data set in some sense. And when you evaluate G on E in prime, you know, it's going to oscillate, it's going to, it's going to oscillate around E out. In particular, half of the time, you're going to, you're going to see roughly half of the time, you're going to see an E in prime that's, you know, less than E out. So in some sense, the probability that E in is deviating from E out by epsilon is approximately a half the probability that E in deviates from E in prime. Okay. And so there's the link. The probability that E in deviates from E out is approximately half the probability that E in deviates from E in prime. Okay. Okay. And so now we have linked E out to E in prime on another finite data set. Okay. And so all we have to do is analyze the deviations between these two in sample errors. On one of the samples, you picked G from the hypothesis set. On the other sample, you just think of it as you're just testing. Now, the complication that arises is that when you have these two samples, you actually have two endpoints. So, you know, in this, in this little example here, you know, you've got x1, x2 up to xn, think of that as d, and then d prime has these additional two endpoints. And so we really need to look at what your hypothesis set, how many functions your hypothesis set can implement on all these two endpoints. Okay. And so that's, that's, that means that we need to analyze the growth function for 2n. But no problem. If the growth function for n is polynomial, so n to the k, then the growth function for 2n is 2n to the k, which is 2 to the k. That's a constant because the breakpoint is a constant number k. So it's still, it's just 2 to the k, n to the k. So it's just a factor of k. It doesn't affect the polynomial nature. Okay. So basically up to technical details, okay, which I'm ignoring here and you can find in the text, it ultimately everything boils down to analyzing a hypothesis set of size, you know, of effective size m sub h of 2n. Okay, and when you, when you collect all these technical details together, together with the, the insight that, you know, to compare e in to e out, it suffices to compare e in to e in prime, okay, we get the generalization bound that we want. And this generalization bound is so famous that it has a name. It's called the vapnik chervonenkis bound or the VC bound. And I'm just going to, you know, we can go through the probabilistic version, but I'm just going to go through the, um, you know, the, 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 the error bar version, which they're all equivalent, okay, but the error bar version might be a little bit easier to parse. Okay. And so for infinite hypothesis sets, okay, it is always the case that, you know, the following bound holds with high probability. Okay. So with high probability, E out is less equal to E in of G plus an error bar. So it's the same basic 
bound that we had before. The same basic error bar, except you know, up to some constants which are which were one over eight now becomes one over two now becomes eight, and two now becomes four. Okay, so up to these constants that changed, you have replaced the size of the hypothesis set by the growth function at two n, the two n n on the two n data points. Now it's possible that you know m sub h of 2n is 2 to the n for all n, in which case that's a bad hypothesis set and this error bar does not drop to zero. And you cannot learn from this hypothesis set because you cannot implement the first step of learning, which is that e in goes to e out. On the other hand, for good hypothesis sets, this error bar drops to zero and we have established in principle the first step of machine learning, which is that with sufficiently large n as determined by you know, what's your error tolerance and what's your probability tolerance and what's the growth function okay, for sufficiently large and what's the breakpoint more specifically for sufficiently large and the error bar goes to zero, E in goes to E out, first step of learning accomplished. Sayonara.